Today I'm going to walk you through the steps needed to import your typical survey file with the goal of using those points to build a civil 3D surface. If you're completely new to all AutoCAD products, you might want to step back from this tutorial and start with some basic AutoCAD tutorials. So here I've got a basic civil 3D drawing, a blank drawing started with the civil 3D template. You definitely want to be sure that you've started with a civil 3D template. If the drawing came from AutoCAD, you're not going to have any of the Civil 3D styles that you need to correctly represent your objects. A quick check of that is to just go to the Settings tab on your toolspace. If you don't see this toolspace palette on the left side of your screen, it can be toggled on and off on the Home tab of the ribbon. And there's the button right here, the first button is for toolspace, and that toggles it on and off. Now if you don't see any particular tab of the toolspace, there are toggles for those as well, right next to the toolspace button. So if you go to the Settings tab and you find your way into something like Surface, Surface Styles, the fact that I see all these Surface Styles means that I did start with a Civil 3D template. If instead I only saw one style and it was called Standard, that's a good indication that I'm not working with a Civil 3D template and I probably want to figure that out before I proceed. So back to this blank drawing. And what we want to do is we want to insert points that our surveyor gave us uh, in a text file. So to import points, we're going to go to the Insert tab on the ribbon import panel and we're going to say points from file. We're going to navigate to our file and here it is. Now it's going to be important that you know the format your file came in. We can usually tell by looking in the text file itself or alternatively, it's information you would need from whoever did the survey. So let's take a look at our file and see if we can figure out what it is. All right, so here's our file. Uh, it's definitely comma delimited, and you can see that the description is last. And I'm going to guess that this is P, N, E, Z, D for point number, northing, easting, elevation, and description, comma delimited. So then I'll look through the Specify Point File Format section, and there's P N E Z D, comma delimited. Gives me a little sample of what my points are going to be imported as, and that looks correct to me. Point number, northing, easting, elevation, and description. And while we're importing these, I'm also going to add them to a point group. Uh, we'll talk more about point groups as we proceed, uh, and you'll see the importance of that. A good rule of thumb when you're adding to a point group is to create a point group that corresponds with the name of the imported file. We might just use the date of the survey, 10 or 16. I'll do a zoom extents, and there's my points. So we'll talk a little bit about why the points look the way they do, why some of the points imported with symbols as trees, and a little bit about how to manage these points through point groups. So if we look, you can see that any point with the description of tree imported with a tree symbol. And if we look at the properties of any of these points, just the standard AutoCAD properties, you'll see that on these sort of default points, in the properties you'll see a style set to default and a point label style set to default. On the tree point, we see that the style is set to tree, and that's the marker. And the point label style is set to point number, elevation, and description. You can think of the default settings kind of like you can think of by layer when it comes to the color of an object. Default means it's deferring to some other location for its settings as far as the marker and the label go. The tree has hard-coded values for both the style and the point label style. Those hard-coded values came from the description key set. If I go to the settings tab and go down under points and then description key sets, the default Civil 3D template has a description key set called Civil 3D. And if I right-click on that and say edit keys, I'll see there are just three keys in use here. And one of them, right here, is what is applying those styles to the tree upon import. What it does is it matches the code here with the description of the incoming points. So you can see any code that starts with TR, any description that starts with TR, will have the tree point style and the point number elevation and description label style applied to it. Just note that the code here is case sensitive and the star is a wild card. So by TR star, anything that starts with TR is going to be considered a tree. We might want to take that into consideration when we might have points with a description of, say, track or train 
because the program is going to interpret those as trees. A safer description key might be tree star. And maybe we can have that anywhere in the description. So we put another asterisk before the code. And now if it finds tree anywhere in a description, it's going to apply these styles to that point. Now these description keys are only applied when points are imported, created, or if you manually run the description keys again. So let's say I wanted to keep the tree symbol, but I didn't want to use this point label style. I'll just uncheck the point label style. So going back to these standard points with the default styles in their properties, where do they get their settings? They come from the point group. And you'll see in the properties of this point, a little farther down, that the primary point group is 10, 4, 16. So I'll go back to my prospector tab of toolspace, go to point groups, and look at 10, 4, 16. So this point group has properties. If you right click, go to properties. And on the information tab, here's the name. And these are the two styles in use for this. If I were to change the point label style for this point group to elevation only, I'll see all the points update except for the points that are tree labeled. Now points can belong to more than one point group and typically they do. You see I've got another point group here called all points. And as you can guess that contains all my points. Now if I go to all points properties, you can see that the point label style is none, so they would show no labels. Now, why do these points, this point for instance, why does it show the settings of 10, 4, 16 over all points? It's because the order in which these point groups appear actually controls the display of the points. If I right click on point groups and go to properties, you can control the order of these point groups. If I move all points to the top, now all points is controlling these points that are set to default. We can use that to our advantage with the point group that I like to create that'll hide all the points. So I'll make another point group by right clicking on point groups, say new. I'll call this point group underscore no display. Give it point style of none, label style of none. On the include tab, I'll say that this point group includes all points. Now you can see that this point group wipes out all the points. They're still in the drawing, but I can't see them, with the exception of the tree points. And that's because the tree points, again, have hard-coded values for the style and the point label style. However, if I really want this point group no display to override the trees as well, I can go back into the properties of no display, and on the overrides tab, I can say that I want this point group to even override hard-coded values in points by checking style and point label style. Then I just use the ordering of my point groups to control how I want to see my points. The purpose of the no display point group can be seen if we look for some points we might use for break lines. To see those points, I'm going to need to turn descriptions back on. And you'll see that I have some ridge points. In the next exercise, we'll build a surface out of these points, and we'll need a break line along the ridge. So I'll make a new point group to display just the ridge points. On the Include tab, I'll say I want to include points with raw descriptions matching ridge. And then I can check on the points list to make sure that it's working, and it is. You'll see a slight change because I used a different point label style, but what I'm really after is seeing just the ridge points, just to clarify what's going on in my drawing. So the way that I'll use this no display point group is to move it just below ridge. So if I take no display, put it just below ridge, what's going to happen is for every point in my drawing, it's going to go down through this list and find the first point group that it belongs to. For the ridge points, that's going to be the ridge point group, and they're going to use those settings. For every other point in this drawing, they're not going to belong to the ridge point group, so they're going to find themselves in the no display point group, and they're going to disappear. So that no display point group is really useful to filter your points to show only certain descriptions, point ranges, elevations, anything that you can assign on the include tab. In the next exercise, we'll take these points and use them to build a civil 3D surface.